I study different types of central nervous system metastases. So I work on looking at models of the way tumor cells can enter into the brain tissue, but also the way they can get into the spinal fluid that surrounds the brain or the protective barriers that surround uh, the brain and spinal cord. And so I build model systems that allow us to recapitulate that and look at molecular mechanisms underlying those processes. Uh, but I also work with our clinical team to get patient samples from patients who are suffering from these different types of central nervous system metastases. And so then we can look at whether our model systems match what is actually going on in the patient when they have uh, a metastasis in say the brain tissue or in their spinal cord. Advancements uh, in the treatment of brain metastases have uh, made a dramatic uh, uh, improvement in the lives of patients. While some patients have uh, durable treatment responses and can even achieve uh, complete disease-free survival, um, there's still many patients who um, do not achieve uh, uh, such benefit. So one of the questions in the lab is what's different about the tumor and the brain tumor microenvironment from a patient who responds to treatment versus a patient who um, does not respond. And um, yeah, if we can understand the barriers um, to treatment uh, within the brain, um, we could make new approaches to uh, more effectively uh, treat these tumors. The lab also um, studies liquid biopsies from patients with brain metastases. The question is, can we use signatures of the brain tumors and the brain tumor microenvironment um, in order to uh, tailor better treatments for these patients? And also, can we develop non-invasive tests that can improve brain metastasis uh, diagnosis, monitoring, and uh, treatment?